Discord. Okay, hope oh, that's going. So we are trying to graph some questions similar to 4a, but I'm not going to do those equations exactly because I don't want to give it away. Um, but how I would do it in Excel, I've got some cues here, and I will. I said in the thing to go to 20, my quantity to 20. So I'll do that. Um, I've got a couple different short run average total cost curves for 1990, 2000, and 2010. Um, okay, let me try to make some different ones. Let me do this too. Let's do this a couple times. Mm, I'll just make up some numbers. Are these squares? Yeah. Oh, 15Q. The pluses, yeah. So if these were kind of the equations that you were given and you wanted to be able to graph these things because I asked you to plot these three different short run cost curves, then again, I know what my first equation here is. So it is 2.5 times the quantity, and I want to square that, minus 15 times the quantity, plus 100. So I'll leave that up there for people to be able to view. Are the, um, is the size of the numbers, are those big enough for people to see on your end? Yes. Okay. So I've got that equation in there. Um, I'll do my year 2000. If one person says yes, then I assume everyone is, is okay with it. So <laughs> if the rest of you disagree, you should have said something. <laughs> 17 times that plus 150. So 1.9 times that Q squared minus 17 times that Q plus 150. And I'll do my last one, 2.3 times Q squared minus 16 times Q plus 125. And I'm just going to copy all those down. So um, everyone comfortable with at least that, that part of it? Yes. Getting these equations into, okay. That, that was the part, I was like, how do I do this? I didn't put together the whole Q column. Okay. Um, so then once I've done that, I can get the next part usually trips people up to. It's tempting to want to, because if you're going to make a graph, it's tempting to want to do this little line chart because you see the little lines here and you're like, oh, I want mine to be lines too. Um, but I've always had lots of issues with that. The easiest one for me to play with is the scatter plot. So I've got my little scatter plot here. And I'll do the dots on it too, I guess. <clears throat> so I've got, it looks like three, well, I've got three lines here. Um, the blue line is my 1990. The orange line is my year 2000. The gray line is my 2010. And they're all kind of, <laughs> they're not as, they all seem to be doing something very similar in this picture. If, if you do yours, then they'll be a lot more distinct than what you see here. So maybe if I can, maybe if I modify this a little bit, um, how much did I modify those? Those are all the same. Those were quite a bit different as far as that goes. Okay. So if I change, if I kept that there, maybe this can become like 27. This can maybe, eh, or if even that will be too much. So 2000, I'll make this 27. Please go to bed. Can you hear the scampering back to his bed after <laughs> I say that? Okay. Uh, well, that becomes negative, which is weird. But let's see if we can bump that up to maybe 250. I don't want it to be negative. Oh, 
Okay, it's not negative anymore. So at least I've got some pictures that look somewhat different <clears throat> than they were before. Um, so if I had to, let's see, if, if this was what my picture looked like, again, which those equations are nothing like what you have here. Um, discuss how your company has changed since 1990 in terms of its size. Um, if I had to tell a story based on these pictures, um, I might say, well, it looks like in 1990, which is my blue line, that I sort of reached our minimum point pretty small compared to the rest of these, um, to where the minimum points are on the rest of these graphs. So I might say, well, it seemed like we kind of reached our peak efficiency, if you want, our minimum marginal cost, or minimum average cost, um, around the three units. Well, I can tell just by looking at the table too. Um, so at three, a quantity of three, we reached the minimum point of this 1990s short run average cost curve. So we were fairly small, I mean, we were efficient at a fairly small level of output. Um, when we went to 2000, which was my orange line, then that minimum point was quite a bit further out. We produced quite a bit more output to get to that minimum. And it looks like uh, seven units of output was the minimum point there. So we grew, and the, the fact that we grew, you kind of see it two ways. Um, our we became more efficient because as we grew, we were able to reach it. We we're able to reach our minimum point of our average total cost curve at a higher level of output, and that minimum average cost was lower than what the minimum average cost was before. So, when we were small in 1990, um, we reached that kind of most e that peak efficiency point at three units of output, and our average cost was 77.5 dollars. <clears throat> When we grew in 2000, we reached our minimum point of the average total cost curve at seven units of output, and that minimum average total cost was $54, so less than the 77. Became more efficient. Mm -hmm. Again, these, these graphs are all just made up, but I'm just trying, right. trying to tell a story based on what's happening. Um, so then, you could, again, if I'm saying, um, discuss how company has changed in terms of its size, again, you could say, well, we grew, and because we're able to produce a higher level of output more efficiently. So then in 2010, my gray line, um, its minimum point looks to be about the same spot, probably around eight units. Yeah, eight units looks like it's the best. So I could say, well, in 2010, we were able to reach our minimum average total cost at eight units of output, which is even larger than it was in 2000. But that minimum average total cost was a lot higher than it used to be. So I don't know, maybe you could say we grew somewhat, but we expanded too much and our costs went up too high. It became too unwieldy to, to manage efficiently. So you kind of tell a story like that. Again, your pictures are going to look a little cleaner. That, well, I think they look cleaner. When you look at them, you, you might think that they're jumbled. But um, you, can, you should be able to kind of tell a story like that. I mean, looking at the curves in relation to each other and be able to sort of tell a story like that. Okay. Um, then I give you, doo -doo -doo -doo. point part B says make another column that includes three points. Those, da, da, da. So if you had this LRATC, and again I said um, 1990s cost when Q equals two, so I could maybe do something like this, 1990s cost when Q equals two. Um, 2000s when Q equals 18. That's it, lay down. Good dog. And 2010s when Q equals 10. So this column only has three data points in it, but then I said, uh, I'm gonna plot this too. So I could go in and um, go to my design and select data. I could add another variable that my X's are still going to be this whole column, but there's only three little data points in it. Whoa. <clears throat> Why did it smush it like that? Why are those way out there? Uh, I probably switched my thing around, didn't I? Yeah, that's right, because the cues are out there. All right, I gotta switch these around. So these are supposed to be my 
y variables, and these are my x variables there. So they're going to kind of be hidden somewhat. Plot a second degree polynomial. Ooh, am I gonna, I'm gonna be able to grab those? No, I did. So I wanna add my trend line, which is going to be a second order polynomial. Ugh, kinda hard to see. It's my little yellow dotted line. And again, it looks, it looks bad in this particular graph because just of the random nature that I generated these equations. Yours will look a lot more like it's supposed to look. It'll look a lot more like a long run average total cost curve when you do it. Um, but I would add my trend line that way. And let's see. <clears throat> In a more competitive industry, da -da -da, typical curves follow that. So you just make another column with your typical company long run average total cost using that equation. And again, you, you would generate your column of data using this equation in the same way that you use these equations to generate these columns. So you just have another column there, 100 over 18, Q squared, etc. So you'd have another column of data, plot that into your picture, and hopefully be able to answer the question based on that. Okay. So, make sense? Makes sense, sorta. Of. More sense? Yes. 